model represents uh, the a sarcomere, which is involved in the sliding filament uh, mechanism of muscle contraction. The plastic uh, can be removed. The green represents the sarcoplastic reticulum. The enlarged ends are called the terminal cisterni, and they store calcium ions. Uh, the message to contract travels down through these transverse tubules, or T-tubules. Uh, the two terminal cisterni plus one uh, T-tubule is called a triad. Let me remove this. Now, at rest, we see a sarcomere here. We have a Z disc here, a Z disc here. That distance is called a sarcomere, and it repeats all along the myofibril. Uh, at rest, we have some overlap between the thin filament and the thick filament. If, the, if it's stretched too thin, then we don't have overlap and we don't get any uh, interaction. If it's too overlapped, then we can't uh, contract the muscle significantly. So there's an optimum uh, amount of overlap. Now in the middle we have the M line. It connects together all the uh, thick filaments. The thick filament is shown in blue here. And it's mainly made up of three under molecules, each one of myosin. And you see these little projecting things here. These are, these heads are also called cross bridges and they're going to interact with the thin filament. The thin filament is shown in red here, um, mainly red. That's the red is little balls are supposed to be actin molecules. Uh, the yellow is called tropomyosin, and it covers up binding sites for the myosin heads. In the middle of each tropomyosin, uh, troponin, it has three parts. One part binds calcium ions, one part is bound to the actin molecules, and an actin molecule, and one part is uh, uh, attached to the tropomyosin. When calcium ions enter the, from the terminal cisterni, uh, they bind to the troponin, the troponin changes shape and pulls the tropomyosin off the active sites so the heads of the myosin can bind. And then the myosin heads will latch on and then swivel and move the thin filament past the thick filament. So what we get is not a shortening of each filament but a sliding of the thin and thick past each other, and that's what causes muscle contraction. Now, for the myosin heads to unbind requires ATP. When ATP binds, uh, there's an ATPase in the uh, thick filament, and it breaks the connection between the thick and thin filament, and the head recocks, and I'm ready for another cycle. Okay. Uh, now, so what we have here, the thick filament is mainly myosin again. Thin filament is actin, tropon uh, troponin, and tropomyosin. Uh, we have banding because of uh, this overlap. The A band, the dark band, D-A-R-K, is where we have only uh, the thick filament. The, on either side of the Z disc, we have the I band, the light band, L-I-G-H-T. You notice there's overlap here in the middle of the A band. Uh, where there is no overlap in the middle, it's a little lighter in color, so that's the H zone. Now, uh, when you die, you no longer are making ATP, so the myosin heads can uh, attach, swivel, and then cannot detach. Uh, the Active sites stay uh, uncovered because we can't get rid of the calcium ions. It takes uh, ATP to get rid of the calcium ions and pump it back into the uh, terminal cisterns. So that's what leads to rigor mortis. Eventually rigor mortis goes away because the lysosomal enzymes start breaking down the muscle fibers.